Well, now, how about this? Uh, couldn't one say that um, truth in the primary sense is as conceived in the realist interpretation, mm -hmm. uh, the one which puts uh, the weight it does put on facts about the world, the way things are in the world. This is truth in the primary sense. Uh, one who says something true in this sense uh, says how things are in the world and what he says is true because things are in the world as he says they are. But uh, what we do and intelligibly do is to extend the word true, the notion of truth, and apply it to other utterances which play a different role in our lives from that of uh, stating or purporting to state uh, how things are in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do this because the acceptability of those utterances depends on the truth of other things which are true in the primary sense. Oh, so there's a kind of dependence right, right. of things which we call true in this extended sense mm -hmm. on uh, truth in the primary sense. Well, I, 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 I see the program, I see the idea of, of, of this extension, but uh, you'll have to refine it, won't you, because there are a large range of things which we judge to be acceptable on the basis of truths in the primary sense, which we w I don't think even you would want to call true, uh, such things as giving of advice and commands. I mean, these we are, we do evaluate uh, in the way you suggest. Yeah, uh, that's quite right, of course, and so I, I put it uh, wrongly or insufficiently clearly. Let me try again. Mm. Uh, let's take a, a mathematical formula, a simple one like uh, 7 plus 5 equals 12. Now, it, it's quite clear that this doesn't state how things are in the world. Uh, uh, more specifically, it doesn't state uh, what the results are of certain sorts of counting operations. Uh, for example, you might uh, count one group of sheep and then another group of sheep separately and then count uh, all of the sheep together and if you do so, you will characteristically come up with a certain result. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, it's certainly true that 7 plus 5 equals 12 doesn't state what this result is. But the fact is that counting operations of this sort, not just on sheep, but on hun uh, millions of types of things, do regularly and characteristically have a certain outcome. This is a fact about the world. Mm. Right? And because of this fact about the world, the mathematical formulae and formulae of that sort have a certain utility for us, which mm. they wouldn't have if these facts didn't hold. They enable us perhaps to calculate how many sheep there are in a certain field. Mm. They enable us to get from uh, one set of truths about the world to another set of truths about the, about the world. Mm. And in this way they enter into, are entwined uh, with other elements in our total belief system. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, arithmetic, simple arithmetic, cannot by itself uh, tell us, uh, tell me, how much uh, money I have in my bank account, but it can certainly help me to work out how much money I've got in my bank account. Sim simple arithmetic may be, um, I, I, I can see that it, this account might work for it, but uh, mathematics can get quite refined. We hear, uh, we have uh, propositions about the irrational numbers, about non-denumerable infinities, and uh, say in pure logic we have uh, we have propositions such as Gödel's incompleteness theorem. It's, it's, it's very difficult to see how quite these can be regarded as intertwined in that way. Uh, okay, so one has to admit that uh, mathematics develops a sort of autonomy that um, uh, it develops its own criteria of acceptability, its own procedures of proof, mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, uh, but this doesn't show that the links that I want to emphasize are severed. Uh, the links are, stu are still there. They're just less direct in cases mm. like this. Of course, mm. there's no very straightforward application of highly sophisticated mathematics to the way things are in the world in the way I illustrated in the case of um, in the case of a simple arithmetical formula, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, though the links are less direct, the links are still there. Mm. 
Well, I, I, I agree again that there are these differences. I can see the difference between um, uh, different, uh, demarcations to be made between fact-stating discourse in some primitive and prior sense and uh, the mathematical discoveries. Um, and not only do I see that, that, that these would be distinguished, I can see a, a, an order of development. I can see the, the, the order indeed you see. But it doesn't seem to me to, that the account of truth, the theory of truth, is the place to reflect these differences. It seems to me that, um, uh, that we want an undifferentiated concept. You remember you wanted, uh, and you charged uh, Tarski uh, and others, uh, uh, systematic semanticists, you wanted an undifferentiated tr concept of truth which applied on the one hand across languages and within a language across different statement forms. Well, I want an undifferentiated notion of truth which applies across a, a, a different statement contents. I see, but um, but notice what happens or what can happen uh, when somebody is devoted to your uh, undifferentiated concept of truth. Uh, for example, in uh, instead of being prepared to accept my primary truth and, and secondary extensions, uh, uh, for example, in in mathematics. Uh, what typically happens for somebody wedded to the notion of undifferentiated truth is that he, as it were, extends his notion of the world to keep pace with the uh, uh, undifferentiated notion of truth. Thus he tends to invent or imagine uh, a realm of, of, of timeless, perfect, uh, mm. mutable uh, mathematical objects, uh, the relations between which are reflected or mirrored in the truths of mathematics. Mm. Uh, what you get is, in fact, uh, Platonism in, in mathematics, an extension of the world to, uh, to, to run along with mathematical truth. Mm. And indeed, you get uh, uh, the same sort of thing, though we haven't uh, talked about this in, in morality. You mean the, the sort of non-natural qualities that are more talked about? Non-natural qualities, exactly. Yes. yes. But of course, the undifferentiated notion of truth leads to these excesses, and I agree with you that they are excesses, only if it's a realist one. It seems to me that's one of the great merits of the, uh, the, the thin interpretation that I've given of the Ramsey formula, that we can have an undifferentiated notion of truth which doesn't have this consequence. We don't need objects and, uh, uh, to, to, uh, whose states and relations uh, are, true, are true in virtue of. Ah, I see. You w wish to uh, cling to the undifferentiated uh, uh, version of truth but reject any extensions of, of the, the realist picture that goes well, exactly, along yeah. with it. Yes. Well, now let's see. Th there are two things, it seems to me, that we can, uh, we can agree about. First of all, we can agree about the coverage mm -hmm. of the expression true and of the notion of truth. That's to say, we can agree uh, that the word is used and correctly used, not only of the uh, uh, honest to goodness, empirical truths, which uh, reflect the way things are in the world, but it also has this further extension to cover mathematics, moral judgments, logic, and, and so forth. That we can agree on. And I, it seems to me there's something else that we ought, at any rate, to agree on, namely that this uh, extensive coverage of the notion of truth is something that calls for explanation. Now, it seems to me that uh, uh, the notion I've, I've sketched uh, at least provides the pattern of an explanation. That's to say the notion of primary truth, uh, which is a matter of reflecting the way things are in the world, and then an explanation on the basis of this of how we come to extend the notion into these other fields. Here is well, not a full explanation, but at least the, the pattern, the project of an explanation, uh, but it uh, doesn't seem to me that you uh, have offered one. No, no, I, 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 I haven't and I'm not in a position to do so. Uh, uh, that's to say, the, the demarcation of the class of truth-bearing utterances, or truth or falsity bearing utterances. Um, I, I, I offer this just, just, just tentatively. I mean, we do, uh, the formula itself, he said that P and P, does impose a certain grammatical restriction, doesn't it? I mean, we can't get, he said that, close the door and close the door. Right. And so, I mean, that's going to, that's going to right. do some of the work for us. Well, uh, yes, but the work which this uh, grammatical test does is a work of demarcation and not a work of explanation. Incidentally, it doesn't uh, uh, even do the demarcation quite right because we uh, uh, there are uh, typically constructions like the uh, 
future indicative in English, for mm -hmm. example, which would pass your grammatical test in that sentences in this uh, tense and mood fit in. Uh, but sentences in this tense and mood are often used for giving of orders, for example. Uh, what? what? Uh, well, you, you find this in the um, army orders, company orders. A company will parade at 10.30 tomorrow morning. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This isn't something up for assessment as, uh, as, as true or false. It's not true if they do. No. Well, I I as on the board there, it's an order, right. not a prediction. Uh, uh, so the grammatical test, for one thing, uh, doesn't demarcate quite Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that, that seems to be trivial. Uh, more important that I is the point that at best you get a, a demarcation of the class of uh, things that are true or false and not an explanation of the extension of the coverage, the range of that class. Well, the only deeper uh, suggestion I can make, and I can see that, I mean in, in a way one's got, uh, one could put, a, uh, put the point also by saying how difficult it would be to identify the appropriate grammatical forms in a totally alien Language, for example, one right. would have to look at it. Right. Yes, the only, no, the only, the only uh, suggestion I can make is, uh, and it's a gesture in the direction of belief. The idea, that, that's to say, that anything uh, appropriately regarded as true or false is a proper object of belief. And nice. indeed this might be used to distinguish assertions in, in a complicated way right. from command. Right. Well, I think that's better in that it's not something purely formal, purely grammatical. The idea yes. is that the things which are true or false are proper objects of belief. My worry here is whether the obscurity which doesn't, which surrounds the notion of the coverage of uh, true or false doesn't extend also to the notion of the coverage of belief. Mm. And I think the current tendency to associate belief with action would not yield you an answer here. But what would yield you an answer, and probably is something we haven't uh, time to discuss. Mm.